All right, in this uh, demonstration of cage volume, I'm going to demonstrate how to actually create cage volume using this uh, screwdriver here. You're going to want to uh, draw from real tools, or uh, if you have to use photos, find photos that do have like a three quarter view, like this one here. Uh, don't have tools that are straight up and down or they're looking very flat. See, the idea here is you want to have dimension to your tools. So with the cage volume drawing process, uh, kind of think of it starting off with the same with the contour drawing, where you have a continuous line. So as you start drawing your line, um, you don't you try not to lift up the pen or pencil, and um, basically you draw very very slow, and uh, kind of think of yourself like uh, tracing around like an almost like an I call it like an ant or an alien from another planet. But uh, you draw not only what you know to what you see, but what it also you know to be true. So, for example, here I'm drawing through and ensuring the roundness of the tip here of the screwdriver. And uh, it's okay to go back over the lines. You don't want to spend any time erasing the lines. Very important to not erase. Uh, it's I give the analogy of like trying to write a paper. So you have your first draft, your second draft and so forth until you get your final draft. You might even start with an outline. And so if you threw away your first draft right away uh, and start all over again, that would be like drawing and erasing and drawing and erasing. So instead of drawing and erasing, what you want to do is actually physically uh, have the line drawing there already and basically uh, change and modify. Then you have like a guide. So like right here, I'm discovering the whole uh, connecting part of the screwdriver with the, the metal with the plastic here and I'm trying to figure that out and I'm looking at it and I know it's a little bit off here so I'm just kind of going around a different angle and uh, you know go along here and it's okay basically to trace over and find a different line now you can go a little bit uh, heavier like touch wise if you're drawing especially with pencil um, even with ink I can kind of give like a lighter touch and then uh, press a little bit harder to get the full ink you know, to go through. But essentially what you're doing is imagining the object as if it was transparent. Uh, so you could see like a wire. You can see here these little rings I'm creating here now uh, for this center part here. And that's all due to the fact that I can tell that the object goes all around. Now if I was drawing this real object in front of me, I would like literally rotate around it. So that's the part I'm talking about where you draw which you know to be true for the object. So you can actually rotate around. Now from a photograph, obviously you can't rotate around. Uh, I mean, you can rotate the photo, but not like three-dimensionally. So uh, yeah, you can kind of see what's going on here. The cage volume drawing is not necessarily a pretty drawing. So uh, it's like I said, it's not one of those drawings that are gonna be absolutely beautiful. But what they do allow you to do is it's, it's an exercise in seeing. And I used to draw very well flat things like cartoons and comics. So again, that right brain perception of like flipping the drawing upside down that we did for the pre-assessment, I didn't have to do that. I could see shapes and patterns real easy and draw them flat from flat as a child. And uh, my parents thought I was like a prodigy because I could draw cartoons. But uh, drawing real three-dimensional objects like this, uh, even though it's a photograph of the object, but if I had a real object in front of me, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And so it wasn't until I learned cage volume uh, to really get this down and, and understand how it works. Now, um, there are some little tricks and things you can do about it. Now, do I need to add loops throughout here? Do I need to add a, a loop here, for example, and here? And it's not necessary to do that. So um, I'm in Photoshop, so I'm just going to undo those couple actions here. Um, even that last one, I'm not quite sure if I need it on the end here. I might show a little bit, like it curves around a little bit like that. But um, as you add or, or get more experience with cage volume, you'll kind of figure out how much of it you'll need. In the beginning, I always say, like, draw more of it than you need to. Um, but at a certain point, sometimes you, you get that lost in the uh, drawing itself. You're not quite sure what it is you're drawing. And that's okay, you get a little lost, but um, that just shows that you're not quite focused, so you just have to refocus. It's kind of like uh, riding a bike 
and you're or sometimes even driving a car where you're not quite sure where you're going and you're just like you have these thoughts and random thoughts and you just kind of wander around and uh, you end up at some place you're like how did I get here <laughs> and that's sort of the same idea with the uh, drawing if you don't have really good focus you're not attentive and aware you can kind of get lazy and draw what I call symbols again so that's why it's really important to really focus in in here and try not to draw symbols. So uh, one thing that is, you know, real uh, important information in terms of cage volume is you can see this object here. It's um, all the curves here are going this way, right? Because of the angle of the perspective. So uh, if they were going the other way, we'd be seeing the bottom part, but if we had the top part uh, go this way, it would be wrong. Uh, this one here, for example, if that represents the top. So just be aware of that as you're wrapping around the lines, the direction of those curves. Now, once you have the, the form down and you're pretty happy with it, um, you can add some shading detail with uh, cross hatching or some actual shading. You don't really wanna erase any of these uh, changes to your lines though. But like cross hatching is simple. It's just basically, you know, lines, directional lines going um, to define the form. Now, uh, some hints about directional lines. One thing is to try and follow the form. Try not to counteract it. So, for example, this is a rounded form here. I'll draw it like a very simple kind of shape for it. So it's rounded like this, right? So we want any of the cross hatching lines to kind of curve and follow the direction of the form like I'm doing here. Now, um, you try and follow that or at a diagonal. Diagonals can always work. You just wanna avoid going straight up or straight across. Uh, straight lines represent flatness. So um, if you look at Leonardo da Vinci's drawings, especially, he'll have a lot of the same directional diagonal lines and that's totally fine. You can add it and get the feeling of shading. And it doesn't really have to follow the form necessarily but just by having an angled line, you get that feeling of the shading going across. So, um, but I, I like, um, you know, having rounded cross hatching lines, especially for things like this, you know, with the tools. So you can kind of build up some rounded ones here. You can also add a, a cast shadow. So if you want to add um, some shading here and make the object really feel grounded, you can do that as you go across here. You can add, you know, a little cross hatching shadowing here. Now, um, in terms of the direction of the shadow and all that, you kind of have to think about light direction. So I just put, chose like from a top light, you know, and just like casting a little shadow here. Um, each tool could have its own unique shadow, so you don't have to follow like everything having the exact same shadow uh, or light direction, I should say. The important thing though is if you find that like you're like, hey, that screwdriver tip is too short or too long, you can change it. So if I wanna bring this out further, this is the cool thing about cage volume is you're like, oh, I'm gonna change it and modify it. I'm not gonna spend time erasing it, right? Erasing it again is like starting over with that whole paper. You want to basically um, uh, use the information that's there, right? Like the first draft, and create your second draft in writing. So that's the analogy again in writing, but to drawing. So uh, basically that's all you gotta do for cage volume though, is to make sure the lines wrap around and give you that continuous feeling. It's gonna be a little unnerving to some people in the beginning. Uh, if, if you practice a lot though, I mean you can draw pretty much anything. Again, the uh, beginning objects that I always have people draw is a little thumbtack. And that's because it's uh, plastic and transparent. So kind of draw one here real quick. I've got one in my hand. What's nice about those plastic uh, transparent ones, the thumbtacks, is you can actually see through the object. And it's just a good starting point. Uh, it's sort of a simple form. And the really cool thing is to kind of think of that dividing line where the plastic is being created. If you can capture that in the, um, the drawing, you tend to have some really great form at uh, this sort of bell, bell shape. And again, having that continuous connected line, you'll find the best animators and draftsmen out there that draw a lot. They don't spend time erasing a lot of times. They'll spend a lot more time just redrawing uh, darker, heavier lines. 
and um, creating more gesture lines, which we'll eventually get to eventually. But um, if you follow this technique of really understand cage volume and keep it nice and slow, try not to go too fast. Like I'm drawing this tack probably about at least two times as fast as I should. Um, I'm getting a little wobbly here at the end here. Just not quite having quite the control on this stylus. Again, I'm working in Photoshop here, but um, I'll do some examples on paper too eventually. But you'll see here that um, the technique, this is how it works. So until next time, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, um, allow the lines to wrap around continuously. Don't lift up the pen or pencil. Um, kind of think like a giant wire wrapping around, wrapping around. Uh, until next time, see you soon. Cheers.